So what we want to look at next is another property of a matrix called the transpose. The transpose of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix is basically obtained by exchanging the rows and columns of a matrix. So what I mean by that is, uh, I will show by example. For instance, if we have this, that's three. If we have this matrix, let's call it A, then the transpose of A written as A transpose, A capital T, a superscript is basically the columns the columns of this matrix of the original matrix become the rows so here we will have uh, 1 4 2 5 and 3 6 so you can see the uh, you can see the connection between them so the rows have become columns and the columns have become rows. So um, any matrix, uh, we can take the transpose of any size of matrix by simply interchanging the rows and columns. The columns become the rows and the rows become the columns. Another way to look at this is if A, our A matrix has entries A, I, J, then the transpose has, has entries J, I. So basically, you simply interchange the rows and columns. For any A and B of appropriate size, here are some here are some properties of the transpose. Transpose the first one, the first one is a very um, very straightforward one. Uh, it states that the transpose of the transpose gives you the matrix back. So if I take the transpose of this matrix, okay, so that will be AT transpose in this way, then what will happen is 1, 4, uh, the columns, the rows become the columns, so 2, 5, and 3, 6. So if you look at that, that's the same as this matrix. So uh, that's what, all that's saying. Uh, this is simply saying that the sum, uh, the transpose of a sum of two matrices is the transpose of the individual matrices. Same thing for subtraction. It, it, clearly, the transpose of a scalar, ma a scalar is just the scalar itself, so it doesn't have any effect. And this is quite important, the last one, very interesting property, keeping in mind that uh, order uh, in which we multiply matrices is crucial uh, to the result. So therefore, in the same way, if we take the transpose of a product, uh, there, there is an interesting property which says that the transpose of a product is in fact the transpose of the matrices in reverse order. Uh, in, uh, of multiplication. The next property we look at is the trace of matrix. Again, a very simple, straightforward idea. The trace of a matrix, on the other hand, as opposed to transpose, which is applicable to any size of matrix, the trace of a matrix, uh, the concept of the trace is only applicable to square matrices. So one of the requirements is that the uh, matrix A, uh, so if A is a square matrix, okay, so this is very important, if A is a square matrix, okay, then let's say that this is any general square matrix. So this is any general square matrix A. Then the trace of A, written as trace of A, is equal to, it is the sum of the diagonal entries. So it's A11 plus A22 all the way up to ANN. -N. Okay, so that's in a nutshell, the trace of a matrix. Quick example, let's take this matrix. This is a square matrix, and uh, let this be the matrix B. And this implies that the trace of B is simply one plus four equals five. So that's the trace of a matrix. Here we will list some properties of um, uh, matrix arithmetic, which is basically addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Uh, including multiplication by scalars of matrices. And we assume, of course, that in all cases, matrices are of appropriate size for the operation to be uh, possible. So here, this is a list for your reference. Um, so as you will see here, there are several properties. Uh, these have been adopted, uh, adopted from uh, Howard Anton's uh, Elementary Linear Algebra textbook with supplemental application, 11th edition. Uh, this, uh, as you know, that's our reference textbook for this course. So you can find it in the book as well. But these are just listed here for your reference. Um, as you can see, uh, most of these are 
rather straightforward and they show you the various um, uh, rules of um, addition, subtraction, multiplication of matrices, and of course, uh, uh, multiplication by scalars. Now, of course, I am assuming here that these uh, A's, this A here, these A's are all scalar values, as are B's. The small letters are all scalars. Okay, these are all scalars, scalar values. And A, and, uh, A, B, and C are matrices. Okay, so A, B, and C are matrices. Right. So let's go and define zero matrices. Zero matrices are uh, clearly matrices that are that contain only zeros. For instance, quick examples are the best way to demonstrate. So here are some zero matrices for your reference. You will notice that they can be of any size. Okay. The important thing to keep in mind is that they contain only zeros. etc. So those are these are just uh, some examples of zero matrices. Some properties and things to keep in mind about zero matrix is that any matrix plus the zero matrix, okay, is of course uh, commutative and it's equal to A. All right, that's the property of the number zero as well and it is also the property of uh, zero matrix matrices. Okay, and if you were to multiply the zero matrix by any matrix A, it would give you the zero matrix. And you can do that quickly. And of course, we are saying of appropriate size. Multiplication must be, uh, must be possible. Okay, so if you multiply the zero matrix by any matrix, you will get uh, the zero matrix. Here is a quick example. Uh, for instance, if we take 2, 3, 4, 5 and multiply it by the zero vector, um, which is appropriate uh, multiplication is possible 200 zero, zero, so that's 0 400 zero, zero, plus uh, 23 uh, okay it's 0 so there you go so it will always end up uh, being 0 and um, in the same way um, here's another one if you take the same matrix and multiply it by the 2 by 2 zero matrix the 2 pi 2 zero matrix you will get 0 0 0 and 0 you can check these yourself in your own time so those are some properties of zero uh, matrices